What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip that initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below, so please feel free to use them. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too. And let's just crack straight on with today's stories. Much love, guys. And today's first story is from Can't With Her. Am I the arsehole for still not letting my sister into my house after she made me miss daughter's birth? Frankly, I don't know if I'm being an arsehole. Family seems to think I am, so I just want to know what others here think. My sister, 25 female, was going to meet her dad. Not my dad, by the way, for the first time in almost 18 to 19 years. And she was really nervous. She asked me to go with her for support. He was staying at some hotel 30 minutes away and the whole ride over there. My sister had my phone to give me directions. My wife was calling me because she had gone into labor. Then my mother-in-law was calling me too. My sister put my phone on do not disturb without me knowing and erased the notifications. I didn't even realize until after we were leaving from having lunch with him an hour and a half later that she'd been calling me. All my sister told me was that I'd missed a call, more like dozens. When I found out I was yelling at her the whole ride to the hospital. She apologized many times. Her only excuse was this was a big emotional moment for her meeting her dad and she was scared doing it alone, knowing how her anxiety is. This was the only time they'd have to see each other since he was leaving in a few days and he wouldn't be back for months. I really couldn't believe it. By the time we got there, my daughter had already had been born a half hour. Don't get me wrong, I was happy to know my daughter and wife were okay, but I was also devastated to have missed the birth of my first child. Couldn't look at my sister. All I told her was to get an Uber to take her home because I didn't want her near me right now. My daughter is almost four weeks old and almost everyone vaccinated has come to see her. Last weekend, my parents came over with my sister in the car, but I said I don't want her in my home right now. They got mad and left early. I keep hearing it from my family that I'm being completely unfair treating my sister like an outcast by not letting her in my home. But I'm just still angry at her right now and I don't think I have it in me to be in her presence. Am I the asshole? Wow. Now, yeah, I'm not sure how I would feel in that situation. I think I'd be absolutely furious just like you because yeah, she, she comes out with the excuse that this is a once in a lifetime sort of emotional moment. So what's giving birth then? What's seeing your child being born? And let's not forget about the wife, how stressed she's going to be in that situation, wanting her husband there to support her, but the sister has taken that away as well. Uh, I, I don't even, <laughs> I'm lost for words on this one. I don't know how you could forgive that sort of thing. Because I may be wrong in saying this, but it seemed like sister did seem to know what was going on. She did seem to know like that call is going to be something urgent like labor or something like that. So, but wow yes you are definitely not the arsehole in this situation i'm gonna be interested in the comments on this one and we'll start with well fudget saying not the arsehole she knew exactly what she was doing she made you miss something once in her lifetime and i can't imagine how important that must have been for you and the fact she did it to go see her deadbeat father that's tragic and ironic and your parents can't even see it your way a little it seems you have every right to be furious and Trap says not the arsehole you know what else is a big emotional moment? The birth of your child. She didn't have the right to prioritize meeting her dad over you being present for a huge moment in your life. You can choose how you want to respond to that. They don't get to manage how you feel. An alert potato says, not the asshole. She didn't just make you miss the birth of your baby. She is personally responsible for wife being denied the comfort of having her partner by her side during labor and delivery. Birth is still potentially deadly for both mothers and babies and your sister risked your wife's and daughter's health and lives by interfering in your ability to be contacted. The fact that your family is sticking up for her makes me think she's got some sort of spoiled princess complex and will likely never apologize. And if she doesn't, your relationship with her is probably not salvageable. And Symmetry of Zero says, not the arsehole, that's fucking disgusting behavior from your sister. I'm so sorry you missed such a magical moment. I'm so sorry for your wife who missed out on your support and sharing that moment with you. And Rai Lulu says, not the arsehole, your sister decided that leaving a woman give birth while stressing out about where the father is was less important than her own stress and tampered with your phone. 
A birth is a once in a lifetime event. There is no redoing it and even if your wife and in-laws hopefully understood, it will never erase the feelings they had at that moment, being rage or stress. I would be so worried that you'd have been in an accident if you don't answer to that many calls while you know to keep your phone closer around the birth due date. Your sister is owed nothing. She was the builder of her own misery. And now let's move on to the next story. And our next story does come with a full update after it. So we'll read the story, some comments, then we'll go to the update straight after. And this story is from Unlucky. Am I the asshole for being strict on leaving at a time I said we are going to leave? My 23 female boyfriend, 25 male, has a history of being late and unprepared to pre-planned events and gatherings. Sometimes it can be annoying, but more often or not, it's really no big deal. Usually when he comes over, he'll say, I'll be over in an hour, and magically that hour will turn to three hours. It happened on my birthday when he said he'd be over at 10 a.m., and he wasn't over until noon. And again when we were going out with friends, at 10 minutes before we were supposed to meet, he called to ask my opinion on a surfboard. He was at a sports store 30 minutes away. Though it can be a bit annoying, it's not like I have a time crunch, and it usually doesn't bother me except for the following time. We took a trip to a place about a six hour drive from where we are. We were going to leave right after work around 6 p.m. But when we didn't leave until around 10, because he was simply late to come pick me up. It was one of the worst drives because we were both extremely tired. We had to stop at the rest stop to sleep for a couple of hours. We woke up at 4 a.m. after an awful uncomfy sleep in the back of his car, and my dog peed in the car while we were asleep. We got to our hotel that morning at 8.30 and 9 a.m. and slept basically through the day taken away a whole day out of our vacation after a super stressful commute that was much longer than it needed to be as well as wasted an entire day just to recover. Knowing this, we're going on a trip tomorrow where next week I have to work on site, but we are taking this weekend to vacation. However, this specific trip is known to have awful traffic. Sometimes getting through 26 miles of part of the stretch can take between 40 minutes and four hours if you go at the wrong time. He is aware of this, I told my boyfriend that we are leaving my place at 1pm to beat traffic. I'd want to go earlier, but I know he is not an early riser. At 1, we are not coming into my place to get some food, or to bring things down to the car or to go to the bathroom. We are leaving my driver at 1 exactly and no later, earlier if possible. When I said this, he got kind of annoyed and was passive aggressive towards me for the rest of the conversation. I sensed this and told him about how much our last trip sucked because instead of traveling for 6 hours we traveled for almost 11 hours and then wasted a whole day sleeping it off. He said yeah he gets it but that I'm making the trip stressful and it makes him not want to go at all. 4 hours of bumper to bumper traffic is so much worse than leaving on time in my opinion. But he says I am stressing him out by setting such a strict time with high expectations which in his words gives me arsehole like qualities. Am I the arsehole for insisting we leave right at 1 o'clock? I could be the arsehole because I didn't let him choose the time, but he originally wanted us to leave at midnight tonight. This isn't feasible because our Airbnb only checks in people from 3pm to 7pm, and I don't want to repeat the events of our last trip. Edit, my car is currently at the shop, so I will not be able to drive on my own this time. Usually we do drive separately to things because we live 30 minutes away from each other and it takes too much time to pick each other up. Edit 2, he does not have a set time he has to be at work. He works at a salary job, so as long as he puts in 40 hours and gets his stuff done, he can roll in at any time. Now this is definitely a not the arsehole for me and I know several people who are like this that say, you know, I'll be there in an hour and then don't turn up for ages and it's the most stressful thing, you know. If they did say, look, I'm going to be three hours and they turned up in three hours, that's fine. But don't tell me you're going to be turned up in an hour and then not turn up. It's the most stressful and it happens every time. It's got to the point now when, when these particular people say, I'll be there in an hour you can say an hour and a half and then you're, you're more accurate on the time. And it's, it's sad that it's got to that point. But I can totally understand that OP in this situation about, you know, planning ahead for traffic and knowing about traffic and things like that. It's just good planning, in my opinion. There's nothing worse than being stuck in traffic, especially when you've got like pets with you as well and additional stresses. Yeah, not the arsehole in my opinion. But Road to Healthy says, not the arsehole. However, since your boyfriend has made it clear that he will not change, other than to be passive aggressive, it is up to you to decide if this is a deal breaker or not. It would be for me. 
And Sintelva says, not the arsehole, he's not upset that you're being strict, he's upset that you're holding a mirror up to his shitty behavior. And Katie the Katie says, not the arsehole, he's stressing you out with his proven past behavior. I tell him that if he literally can't handle the precise time, you're willing to give him a window, but that window will be from 11 to 1. As someone who had friendships with the perpetually late, you have a few options here for general life. One, always make plans for earlier than you actually want them to happen. You need to leave at one, tell him you're leaving at 10. Two, attempt to get him to understand the issue. If they don't or refuse to change, you need to decide if you want to be in this relationship knowing that. Three, become the person who is able to live with this quirk. And Own Lavishness says, not the arsehole, grown-ups commit to times they do things. Not being an early riser is not an excuse. And frankly, if he thinks it's stressful to have a time to leave, he needs to grow up. And now we move on to the update post. So this is the update. Hi, I got a lot of helpful advice on my post and I'd just like to update the situation. The day of our trip, my boyfriend showed up to my place at 12.30 with the only prompting I told you about in the previous post. So I'm glad that even if he was a bit upset about the strict on the time, he definitely showed up and we ended up leaving early at 12.55. As for his chronic lateness, we did talk about it on the road. After thinking about it, it kind of annoyed me that he was late on my birthday and that he was always a couple of hours late when coming over. I told him that those instances made me feel like he didn't respect my time. He said he was extremely sorry that he's been having a rough time adjusting to traffic and that's a fact that he takes a lot of time to get anywhere. We live in a large metropolitan area, but we used to live in the Midwest in the middle of nowhere. So from calculating commute time, traffic and him having alone time, he was just having some trouble. We agreed that his lateness was frustrating and came up with a following solution to hopefully fix the problem. On big road trips like this, we will want to leave exactly on time or earlier. We will plan to meet at each other's places at least 30 minutes to an hour before we plan to leave to make sure we're on time. On events like birthdays or outings with friends, he will schedule the event into his phone 30 minutes before he has to be at the event so that if he forgot or lost track of time until that moment, he has some time to drive and be at the event somewhat on time. When he comes to hang out, instead of just saying I'll be over in an hour because he's a bad ETA estimator, he will say what he plans on doing before coming over so we can both create a better ETA. Example, him, I want to drive home, shower and pick up groceries before driving to your place. Me, okay, that sounds like that might take about two hours, including travel time. As for people suggesting ADHD, he says he's unsure of where to go to for now, but he may look into it, as he and I have never thought that ADHD could be the cause of this, but the time when he was looking at surfboards when he's supposed to be at our meeting place definitely points to this. Thank you for sharing this point of view. We would never have known. I understand for a lot of people this might have been a breaking point, but honestly for me, it's one of his only problems. In almost every other aspect of our relationship, he's been nothing but a great boyfriend who loves and supports me in my goals as a human being. So although I think some of those opinions are kind of extreme, thank you for your point of view because it did help me put my foot down and have this conversation. Edit, I'd really like to thank everyone who gave me advice on the ADHD aspect of this. Someone in the comments listed symptoms of their own ADHD and it sounded exactly like him. I'm also really grateful for those of you who provided a way to step in a direction to find a diagnosis. We really didn't know where to start, but this whole thread was super helpful. Thank you so much. And it's a nice update, a nice wholesome constructive update where they just got nothing but solutions and that things are going in the right direction. You know, you don't often see it that way on Am I the Arsehole? So it's really great to see. And it's great to see solutions coming from Reddit as well, rather than just breaking up, you know, coming up with the stuff like the ADHD and pointing at that so they can actually look into it. Not saying that he has it, but give him the option to look into it. Fantastic. And let's move on to the next story. And our next story comes from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for telling my sister why I resent her? My 19 female sister, 16 female, had a certain chronic pain condition growing up. It's one that's incredibly hard to diagnose, but our mum had a friend in that field who was able to do the test. My parents both work jobs that require a lot of work and they both were incredibly busy a lot. So they let my sister use me as an almost servant. She could literally demand me to get her water, reheat her heating pad, and even sometimes get her something to eat when these symptoms are occurring. I always resented my sister for this because in my opinion, she abused this power. Recently, I was doing some work for my part-time job. College is why it's part-time. And my sister asked why I never want to spend time with her and do things with her and I just told her the truth. 
the fact that she would literally use me as a servant. She was upset and said that she, she just wanted help managing an incredibly painful condition. I told her that that doesn't change the fact that she could do certain things on her own without me. She said that I'm being really mean for blaming her for that and I told her that I'm blaming her for not getting off her ass and doing some things herself. She ran out of my room and slammed mine and her own door. I tried to go and talk to her about it but she won't let me in her room saying that I was mean and uncaring and she didn't want to talk to me so I really feel like an asshole because she doesn't get very emotionally upset a lot and essentially telling her she was lazy because she wanted help is a little bit of a dick move. So am I the asshole? Also, if I am the asshole, please express so I can change, but I don't think my parents are assholes as they just gave her the option, but I believe she abused it. And I don't think they can be blamed for that. I also never told them I thought she was abusing it. I only told her to please try and get this item herself sometimes. And we're gonna start with outrageous text saying you're the asshole for refusing to put any of the blame on your parents who are solely responsible for putting you in that situation in the first place, where your sister was a literal child. Well, caring for her absolutely should not have been your responsibility. You are parentified. You can't blame a sick child for needing care. And Ron said, right now, I'm going to say no one's an arsehole here. I live with chronic pain. I've not been able to work for almost two years. I manage some things. I can do shopping. I usually cook one meal a night, but I take a lot of pain meds just to manage that much. My point is, I know how utterly exhausting and demoralizing chronic pain can be. I know how tempting it is to just give up on a lot of days or nights. And if someone is able to help me, I'd so want to take their help. Now I'm almost 50. I have the willpower to not nag my wife to do this or do this for me all the time. But if I were a kid, no, I'd pester everyone for help. Meanwhile, OP was thrust into the situation where she had to be much more of an adult than she ever should have been subjected to normally. But I understand the financial reality of having no other choices. It's normal that OP would feel resentment, but I think that now, if possible, it's time to either do therapy together, if that's a choice for you, or just take things slowly and repair what should be one of the most solid relationships in each of your lives. Chronic pain is a thief. It takes our patience, our joy, our goodwill, and often our friends and family. Try not let it completely steal your relationship with your sister. Neither of you are at fault for the situation you have to endure. Good luck. And a ghost says, I'm not exactly sure why you're putting resentment towards your sister who can't really do much about her condition. Why not be mad at your parents for putting you with such task? And engineering own says, you're the arsehole because you're lying in your initial post. She didn't demand anything. She'd asked you for simple things like heating up a heating pad, getting a drink or some food. You felt she could do these things herself and would tell her to do so. You have no idea how bad her pain was. She was 12 or 13. It wouldn't have killed you to have a little kindness and help her when she needed it. I'm blaming her for not getting her off her ass and doing it herself. How would you feel if, for example, you had really painful periods and someone you loved said this to you? And Slammy Not Salami says, you're the asshole, incredibly painful condition can mean that things like getting food or heating pad are incredibly painful and debilitating and make symptoms even worse. That is not laziness. Should that have been your job? Likely no, but it also wasn't her fault. Your feeling is valid. Yes, you were asked to stand in when you shouldn't, but your reaction and hurtfulness towards her are not warranted. Maybe a path forward would be to spend some time learning about the disease and how pain affects the body and mind. Also, it sounds like she's lonely. Maybe this is an opportunity for you two to move forward as sisters and talk about it openly. And now we'll move on to one more story. And this story is from No Wheel 14. Am I the arsehole for telling my stepson to go to his real mum? My stepson 17 hates me. I'm considered the reason his parents divorced. I started dating his dad near the end of the ongoing divorce, but my husband didn't want to shock him, so I didn't meet him until after the divorce had been finalized. My stepmom's mum went pretty downhill after the divorce. She got addicted to meth because of her boyfriend and is currently missing in action as well as her boyfriend. My stepson had been in therapy for the last three years since then. Once I got pregnant, he got extremely nasty. He constantly asked me about my baby and obviously hoped it would disappear. I gave birth successfully though and my stepson was sulking the entire day. His father cheered him up. My stepson asked me why I ruined his parents' relationship and I didn't really answer because I felt guilty. But then he said, honestly, if it wasn't for you, my mum wouldn't be addicted and missing. I responded back with, then if you care so much, go to her then. I immediately regretted it and apologized, but the damage had been done. He went to his father and he blew up on me. He said I shouldn't have mentioned her at all, and that's what an arsehole would do. 
but he mentioned her first. Am I the asshole for what I said? Was I being insensitive? Now, I think you already know you're the asshole in this situation. You, you pretty much said it yourself in this post. But from what I'm reading that, and I'm trying to step into the son of stepson who's already going through everything, you know, his mum's disappeared. There's been a divorce going on and he, and he sees you in this particular way and trying to step into the shoes of this 17 year old who like, who one of his guardians turns around and then says, then if you care so much, then go to her then. I'm basically seeing as that, like, go be gone then go on then you go find her then if that if that's what you want to do i don't care so much right i can see how that would be incredibly painful to, to have been told especially with everything else going on at the moment all the other feelings you're not you're not helping your relationship with him at all and is you're just pushing him further away by saying something like that and whether you can recover that relationship or not i just do not know but we'll start with KL saying, sorry, but yes, you're the asshole. You're the adult and are supposed to be the bigger person there. Also, you did technically start dating his dad when he wasn't fully divorced yet. While waiting might have changed absolutely nothing in practice, to his son, you're probably always going to be seen as a homewrecker. I'm betting the reason he was hoping the baby would disappear was because he knew he'd come second place and you made it abundantly clear he was right about that. You told him to go to his mum, who is missing and might as well be dead in a ditch somewhere. I bet he would love to go to his mum, but he can't. He's stuck with his evil stepmom, his cheating dad and their new baby. Now he got verbal confirmation that you'd rather be rid of him. Every adult in his life failed him massively. So congrats on contributing to that. And Yippie Coyote says, you're the asshole. Look at your title. Now reread what you wrote. My stepson 17 hates me. I wonder why. And Sid Elvis says, you're the arsehole. Are you old enough to know better? And SD Rose says, you're the arsehole. You told him to disappear. You told him to disappear. Do you realize what you said to him? You told him to disappear. How cruel. He is a young man whose family got torn apart, which at the young age, he didn't completely understand. His father quickly finds someone else. Before he gets his feet under him, his mother gets addicted to drugs and disappears. His mum. You had a child. Think of what your child would feel like if you disappear. Think how you would feel if you were a teenager and your mother disappeared and you have no idea if she is dead or alive. You just know she is gone. That is what this boy is dealing with. Then his father has a new child. Is this child replacing him? And now his stepmother told him to disappear. He is struggling, OP. And all you can do is think about how it's affecting you. He is struggling. Yeah, he's not allowed to treat you like crap, but you are the grown up. You have the husband, you have the new baby. Who does he have? Have some compassion, work with his dad, talk to his therapist about what you can do. Maybe step back from being his parent role and just try to be an adult he can count on. You really need to think about what you said from the place it's coming from. And I think you need someone to talk to, so don't lash out, but can help you find coping skills to help in this terrible situation. You're the asshole. Now, once again, thank you for being here today. I hope you did enjoy today's stories. And if you did and you have a bit of time, please leave a comment below about your verdicts and your opinions on today's stories. Poppy just running off into the distance there. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> thank you so much for your love, your time and support. And if you want to support the channel further, you absolutely can, but never any pressure to do so by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link in the description for Patreon and joining up there. Thank you for your love, time and support. And I will see you in the next one. Take care guys, much love. Boxes are defeating, purpose always fleeting. I poise questions to the ceiling like an answer gonna come. Truth is too revealing, life is easy concealing. All emotions to the star on your heart going numb. I shouldn't be in drive more, I just wanna feel alive more. I feel hurt all the time, boy, I can't see straight. I've been